Now in its 10th year, this is GabNet. Talk like you've never heard it before. This is Alex, and this is the Ramble. Mm-hmm. We go until midnight tonight from New York City. There she is. That's Lori Thompson. Oh, and, howdy! And you know, pushing <laughs> the fact that she lives in Florida, where all the plants are in bloom and and all of that. You know, I want to see you out there when it's freezing. <laughs> well, it does get cold. In the Panhandle, we get into the 30s, and so right. that's, I mean, that's not too bad, but occasionally a, a little lower than that, but very rarely. Well, we have the so, air conditioning on now. Oh, you do? Yeah. So see, see, usually when it gets to be up like 80 and stuff, we don't turn on the air conditioning, but then all of a sudden it gets humid. Yes. And that's when you yes. need the air conditioning. And by the way, do they make air conditioners that say, hey, some of this heat is humidity, let's turn on the air conditioner. Or does it say, no, here's the current temperature that we're going for. Most of them only go for a certain temperature. Yeah, you're right. Well, you can get dehumidifiers that set the water back, you know, for your house. Yeah, but then then those dehumidifiers you got to empty all the time. They do become a little bit of a nuisance. Yes. And in the in the Midwest, then in the winter, you get humidifiers, or your lips crack, and uh, all kinds of stuff. Yeah, so I mean, it's a, it's terrible. So what happens if you get? Uh, I wonder about this. By the way, this is Lori Thompson. Did I say that? Well, you did. Her, her name is up there under her picture. So <laughs> if you can't read, then screw you. But anyway, <laughs> where was I? Oh, you yeah. were talking. Yes. About the humidity. Uh, and yeah, the, I, So, okay. They have humidifiers, right? Right. And they have dehumidifiers, right? right? Now, and if I put both of them on in this room at the same time, what happens? I don't know. I guess you break even. You, you know, break just, even, <laughs> right? Yeah. Neither. Uh, I don't know what would happen. <laughs> I've never tried this little experiment, but... We should call, uh, yeah, John Hopkins or something. We got enough money to buy a, a humidifier and a dehumidifier and see what happens. We could and just watch watch the mayhem ensue. Because the only thing that bothers me is humidity. I mean, when I'm in a room and there's no humidity, it's fine. It's no problem at all so far as I'm concerned, you know? Yeah. Well, to me, the ideal temperature for inside mm-hmm. is 78 I'm I'm happy at 78. You're happy at 78. Um, yeah, I mean winter, summer, anytime as long it is as 78. But when you live in a really warm place, Florida gets very hot in the summer. Um, people think that you're supposed to have the air conditioner, so the temperature is about 68, which to me is way too cold. I don't want to be 68 degrees. I put mine degrees on my- about at about. I'd like to make it at 77, but the problem is is that it doesn't turn on enough. So oh. I go down to 76, 75, somewhere around in there. Yeah. Yeah. But I think that that, you know, that upper mid 70s range is perfect. And I then, have a, but, I, I have an air conditioner that I can turn on with my voice. Ooh, aren't you fancy? Yeah, I have, have lights that I turn on and off with my, you know, it's like Alexa for electricity. Well, Echo, turn on office. And now all the lights went on in here, but you can't tell the difference because I'm using these lights here. But TV lights. Yeah. Yes. But anyway, so you enjoy the warm weather down there, right? Yeah. I, it, it almost never gets too hot for me. On the other hand, um, I get cold really easily. So, um, you know, the first thing I do when you get in a car, and this is a lot of women do this, we turn on the heat immediately, like when the car starts, you know, mm-hmm. fully realizing and fully knowing that the car has to warm up before it can make heat. 
but still it's like some security blanket. Turn on the well, heat. First thing you realize is you left the cat in the car. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Not and now to mention the baby. Yeah. 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 In the back seat. <laughs> But, yeah. oh, well. Yeah, oh, well. Well, now, my question is, has Rick always lived in Florida, or is he? Oh, no, he's he's like me. He's lived a few places. He was born on Long Island, mm -hmm. uh, been born in Brooklyn, oh. moved to Long Island. Yeah, and then uh, lived in California in Sherman Oaks for a while, mm -hmm. and uh, lived in Miami, your favorite place. Ugh. And... <laughs> And he's lived in New Jersey and yeah, several several places. So yeah. um, you know he and he we used to keep the temperature like at seventy seven, which is ideal. But now over time he's gotten like lowering the thermostat, like I wouldn't notice. Now, you know? do you fight over the thermostat? We don't because I but I have sweatshirts, all you know, zippered hoodies. I have them by the billions so that I can just slip one of those on. That way you don't have to argue. And when there are better things to, you know, if you're going to argue, not something as petty as the, as the temperature. Yeah. That's my, that's my sentiments. So now you've lived all over the country. Yeah. Right. You've lived in uh, the, you never lived in New York. No, I have not. No. And I like New York. I wouldn't mind living in New York. But you were born in it, the Midwest. Yes. And, and then and then you worked your way to California. Yes. And then California didn't want you any longer, so you moved back to the Midwest, right? Well, after 20 years in San Francisco, yes, I, I went back to Illinois for a while, for about five years. What, what did you live? In, did you live with your parents? No, only for a short time till I found an apartment. Did you feel because, that that short time that you went back to live with your parents, you kind of had given up? I felt like, yeah, well, I kind of needed to retool my life and yeah. shed some bad habits. And so that, that was effective. Yeah. But, you know, your parent, my mom, when I left home, you know, as a, as a teenager, um, my mom and I were not getting along at all. Really? And then, yeah. yeah. And those things kind of rekindle. You kind of go, you kind of return where you left off. And so I quickly got an apartment that I adored. Yeah, but you, you always had issues with your mother? I did not always, but uh, about when I was a teenager, I did. It kind of went downhill. I had a car wreck. They bought me a new Impala. It was great. It was black. It was gorgeous. And for my, you know, to drive when I turned 16. And I wrecked it 10 days after I had my, got my license. And after that, she things kind of started to get argumentative and then she was she was a of that shaming and blaming school of parenting which i think is horrible you know and she would uh she would remind me of my flaws quite frequently <laughs> and she had expectations which i never really had a say in and yet they weren't my choosing so but did, I that, that, did that keep going on into your into your adulthood yeah a little yeah a little bit i mean was found. there a point where you finally got along oh yeah when i moved to san francisco because we were miles and miles apart yeah and so when we would get together she would come out and she was good to visit she came out like several christmases mm -hmm. and so that was good you know around each other for 10 days or seven days a week we had no problems as an adult. Yeah. Um, but, but you know, did she, it's, did it's she just, approve of your lifestyle? She didn't give me any grief on it. I don't really? know if she, she wasn't crazy that I had started drinking and she was, you know, um, she foretold the fact that it was going to get out of hand, I think. Not immediately, but. She probably eventually. knew you really well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, but uh, other than that, they didn't, she didn't give me a hard time. Once she saw that I found something that I really love as an occupation. Oh, I thought you were going to say alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that too. Because I remember the first drink that I took. 
Um, and I was 21. I didn't drink during high school or any of that. And uh, I had a glass and a half of Chardonnay. And I thought, oh, you and I are going to be good friends. Because <laughs> it just seemed to Well, you came from so a very Baptist family, right? Not Baptist. Uh, uh, Assembly of God. Assembly but, of God. Oh, that's even uh, worse. Oh, it's pretty stringent. Yeah. Uh, you couldn't even go to movies when I was a kid. And no d dances. Now that loosened up as I hit my teens, and so uh, and you know sh no swearing, no drinking, obviously no drugs, and uh, there were a lot of knots. What could you Things possibly you do for fun? We did a lot of roller skating. <laughs> roller skating. Roller skating was okay. Skating was okay. Miniature golf was okay. Okay. Uh, what? So wholesome outings. Like bicycling, we yeah. did that, and we had a mini bike, so that was kind of fun, and uh, we had a pool, so that was pretty fun. Okay, and those those were things that those were allowed, and uh, other than that, my parents were pretty liberal with me. Um, they didn't they didn't have a lot of you can't date until you're you know certain age. They didn't have that. They didn't have curfews really, and it was on like an occasion by occasion basis, mm -hmm. and so they were. They were good parents. I didn't quite see it at the time. All I saw was the things that annoyed me. But they yeah. were good parents. Well, there's an old saying about I. Re my father, when I was growing up, was really stupid. And the older I got, the smarter he got. And yeah, yeah, isn't that yeah. the way it goes? Yeah, and and also um, because you're autonomous. You know, when you when you start making your own money and you don't have to rely on them for resources. Things lighten up quite a bit. Yeah, you know, cause my mom was she was uh, she we had to pay for our own clothes starting when I was fifteen, mm -hmm. I think, uh, when I got a job. I got a job at the grocery store, and they, they would pay half. They would pay half, and we had to pay the other half. I remember I wanted a pair of fry boots, and they were like woo, eighty bucks, which was a lot for the time for a pair of shoes, and so that was my big purchase. But then they, then they, I had to pay for those all by myself. And then they instituted the they'll pay half. My dad was agreeable. You know, if you yeah. wanted something, go to dad. My father had a, had an attitude about me and a car. He said, uh -huh. "You can have a car when you can buy one." That's he, good. He, his feeling being, and you proved it out, that if, <laughs> if if he bought me a car, I'd probably wrap it around a pole because you have no respect for it. You didn't it, pay yeah. for it. It's not you. You know, you didn't. You, there's no sweat and blood on your part to get this car, so he wanted yeah. to make sure I had to, you know, have some sweat equity in the goddamn thing. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah. and I wasn't. I, I was just not ready to take the car out of town, and uh, we, you know, we went. I drove like forty miles. Forty miles was a little bit of a trip. Um, for someone who's only had their license for about a week, yeah, right. And that—that's where my, you know, my automatic reflexes that you develop when you start driving had not. Well, <laughs> so. how long had you been driving before you wrapped this car around a tree? <laughs> no, it was a floral delivery truck, and it was the the day before Easter, so it was loaded with flowers, and they sued the insurance company for everything hang nails you know back problems everything and then we got canceled they then canceled the insurance so they canceled with my parents too and it was a chore to get insurance for a 16 year old who'd already had a wreck you know yeah it was and i heard about that that's when things started to get a little rough with mom because she reminded me of it constantly I remember the time you wrapped the car around a florist yeah. truck. Yeah. Did, yeah. Did, I've heard, did flowers go flying all over your car? No. That would have been kind of fun, kind of picturesque. Yeah. But no, it's just, well, I hit him from obviously behind. Yeah. And uh, it just, he stopped and I don't, it just didn't register. I didn't have, all I had was nerves. You know, in a situation like mm -hmm. that, I didn't have any reflexes. I did nothing helpful. <laughs> well, what happens also is when you first start driving, you're not, you're never really comfortable driving until about a year in or something. 
Exactly, Ben. And that was it. I just didn't have, I went from fine, we're going, everything's cool to there's a car up there. Like if there was a car within any car I could see, yeah. made me a little anxious. Right. And so, and I didn't have the chance to, I hadn't developed that. You know, when you're aware and you're thinking about what you're going to do and what that guy, the other Well, you pretty much be. go from this when you first start driving to this. Yeah. <laughs> Forget the 10 and 2 right off you the know, bat. Or, 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 mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know you're driving with your knee. Yeah, you know, I, after I, a while. Uh, I, uh, I'm worried that I can't drive anymore. Because oh, uh, uh, to begin with, I have a problem of being kind of lightheaded from uh, uh, my neuro- and, and uh, uh, unbalanced from my neuropathy. And I have a little trouble walking. Uh, and so consequently, I, I'm worried that I can't drive a car and and stay awake, or I might crash into something or whatever. And yeah. I haven't, you know, I haven't had a car for 15 years. Yeah, well, I, there years. was, uh, yeah, because yeah. C- in a city like New York or San Francisco, I didn't have a car for about, I don't know, for about two years, mm-hmm. and uh, and didn't have a TV either. When I live alone, I don't have a TV. Really? Just, yeah. What's the reason I just, for that? Um, I don't know. I just started reading more, and reading made sense to me. It made sense to my, you know, personality and my yeah. philosophy. And uh, otherwise, if you live alone, it, this way, instead, if I was in my house and I was jonesing for some company, I would leave the house and I would go for a walk and I would run into people I knew. So, in my thinking, that was a much better way to live and yeah. use of my time. Right. Yeah. Right. But when I live with people, we have a TV. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, yeah. But now you, of course, ha- watch TV with your husband and stuff. Right. We watch too much TV, I think. After dinner, we turn, you know, which we eat kind of late. Um, we eat about 7.30, so we finish up about 8.30. Oh, we eat, and, uh, eat at 5.30. And you will oh, find no. when you get to be 80, you'll be eating at 5.30. Right. <laughs> and and what's the rationale, Ben? You just get hungrier earlier? Or? No, I the rationale is Marjorie uh, kind of gets dinner ready. She doesn't cook it anymore. Uh, she sends out for it, you know, to like Instacart or, you know, uh, Insta Foods or whatever. These DoorDash. Things. Yeah, so, um, uh, but she... we. I can expect that dinner, I, we called for dinner at 525 every day. Really? And do you have like a bunch of places you call or you stick with oh, one? Oh, well, she, she's she got something where, where there are some foods that are kind of prepared and you kind of partially cook them. Yeah. You know, um, I'm trying to remember the name of the company she uses a lot uh, because Instacart is we get uh, stuff from uh, Costco through Instacart, and also oh, a couple okay. of other couple of other well-known, re- uh, what do you call it, uh, food buying places. <laughs> like you never heard yes. of Stu Leonard's, have you? No, no. What's Leonard's? Stu Leonard's is a uh, is a store up in uh, up in Westchester, and they have quite a few of them around now, and it's. A weird because it's kind of like you take your cart and you go down this path that winds through the store <laughs> and you go around you it mean, and you go oh there I get that and then I'll get that okay let me roll down this and it's literally a path now you can cut through it at certain points now is this virtual uh, like, no no really it's, it's literally true. a path yeah oh and and it, it, it occasionally you keep coming up on the same foods. Occasionally, they yeah. have it arranged that way. Like you know, here's such and such soup. Then you go another half a mile. I know not. <laughs> you judge how far in this thing. And there's the same soup again, just to make sure you didn't forget the soup. Right? Are you sure you don't want the soup? Yeah, but yeah, Stu well, Leonard's is pretty good. The produce is terrific, and the the meats are wonderful, just wonderful. Cool. 
Yeah. Yes, Jew Leonard's. I'll look for that because it might reach Florida. I don't think no. you, I don't think you have it down there. No, we don't. I haven't ever seen yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you know who has good prepared foods, believe it or not, is Sam's Club. We've had, we, we get stuff from, uh, like, if we're going to go prepared food. Rick went through a phase where he cooked every night, but he's kind of old to that now. And yeah. so, but we also have, uh, from the place where he, you know, he took that part-time job at the pizza place because he gets so restless and so bored. And so uh, we get free pizzas from them. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Which is nice. Yeah. 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 But but uh, uh, so uh, you, do you ever go to Costco? Yeah. Costco's aren't as big here as Sam's Club is, but they're, yeah, we could go to Costco. Yeah. yeah. I, I like them. I like them both. And, you know, and at least I think Sam's has their own brand called Maker's Mark. Yeah. Is it... Or, yeah, or is that a whiskey? I don't know. But uh, remember, but anyway, M and something. And uh, they, for instance, on their sheets, and I wondered for years why nobody did this, and then Sam's Club did it, on the sheets that you buy there, and they have good sheets. I mean, uh, I mean, you can get good sheets there. Um, and the uh, fitted sheet is labeled top, bottom, side, side, which, you know, before you were kind of playing roulette, you get this fitted sheet on and then realize oh, really? you put the Yeah, isn't that smart? So I like them for that. I don't think you can get I, fitted sheets at Costco. No. Costco well, is like everything everything's too large for two people. Yeah. Okay, that's the problem. Uh, mm -hmm. and it, what's not too large is you can buy as much toilet paper as you want. You're going to wind up using all of it. Okay? Exactly. Yeah. Paper towels. You're going to buy as many as you want. Eventually, one day, you're going to say to your husband, or I'll say to Marjorie, oh, we ran out of paper towels. You know. Oh, my gosh. We used our last roll. But one day, we ordered too many things of paper towels, and we both said, well, that's no problem. We're going to use them eventually. Yeah. Same exactly. thing with toilet paper. You can't buy enough toilet paper. You could buy literally 1,000 rolls of toilet paper, store them in your closet, and one day somebody's going to say, we're running out of toilet paper. Exactly. You know, you know that's, that's an inevitable. So the toilet paper is a big thing at, at Costco. Is it? Also, they're roasted chicken. They've Very never good. changed the price on it. It's always been 5 95 I think which is a pretty good price for a roast for the whole chicken. chicken yeah 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 that is good yeah those places my dad calls it the holes in the menu you have to find out the things that they do exceptionally well and go with those items because some places can be really overpriced except they've never changed you know they never changed what they charge for pickles yeah you know? Just, yeah. you got to know. Well, at Costco, the big thing was they've had a hot dog that you can get there. Hot dog in a bun, you know, with relish mm -hmm. or whatever you want on it. And a diet soda or a soda, mm -hmm. one forty nine. Yes. And my it's daddy... always been one forty nine. The guy who started the place said, we will never change the price on those hot dogs. And when hot dogs got too expensive, they started making their own. Yeah, see, I love, you can find some good uh, snacks. I think it's such a good idea that they have like snack bars in Sam's Club and Costco. And my dad and I used to go, I think it was Sam's Club, um, when I lived back in Illinois for that time. Yeah. Um, and he, I would go with him to, uh, to Sam's Club and we'd get a pizza. He'd get hot dogs and I'd get pizza. And we had a fun little bonding over over carbohydrates. Yeah, right. That, right. That right. Was, well, uh, you know. So uh, let's see. We've discussed your mother. We're almost running out of time here. What I, I have a couple of things I want to get into on that because there is something about daughters and mothers. Yeah. There's always yeah. a point of contention. There is. And now my uncle has a theory that the reason there's contention in your teens is because technically it's preparing you to leave home. It's creating friction 
so it won't be as traumatic. Well, because to you have the feeling of independence the minute you hit like 15 or yeah. maybe 16. And your parents don't like that because you're not ready to go out into the world yet. You know, this is true. The only time yeah. I ever had a fight with my father and I tried to slug him was when I was 17. And I loved my father. I adored him. But I tried to slug him. What do you remember? Why? I can't remember why. I just, yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's it's uh, hormones going crazy. You know. Oh, yeah. Uh, at that age. Teenagers. Well, that's be why teenagers behave somewhat erratically. Oftentimes, yeah. Yeah. you know, it's, it's a hormone catastrophe going on in there. Well, we've run out of time for this little session of Alex and Lori, but it, we shall return again next week. Yes, we shall. Thank More you Freudian so analysis. very much, Lori. Wave bye. Wave bye 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 bye. 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 Now in its tenth year, this is Gadnet talk like you've never heard it before. Yes, yes, yes. Hold on a second. I'm gonna. I, I'm still trying to get things uh, set up here correctly, so that I. I don't like to wear the earphones anymore, and and so therefore, I uh, I set this thing so I can hear it through the speakers, but I don't want it to feed back either. So, what have you? So how are you? This is. Uh, this is uh, Wednesday. Uh, this is our first day of the week for the nighttime show. Uh, we do the uh, afternoon show at 4 o'clock on uh, Mondays. And we go out over Facebook. Hmm, excuse me, I got something in my mouth. And I, I, I just brush my teeth and I've still got stuff in my mouth. Huh. How about that? Uh, let me see here. I... Uh, uh, you know what, I, I, one thing I've been trying to figure out is how to get myself not looking so pale. I mean, am I this pale? No, I, I'm not this pale. And uh, so therefore, I have to do this, uh, which is, um, uh, well, I could do that. Let's see here, does that change it at all? Uh, you see, that, 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 that makes it kind of like, that. now there, there, how's that? Hmm? Is that a little nicer, I guess? I don't know. I have no idea. Anyway, uh, how many people do we have waiting? Oh, okay, we got three people here, so I will admit them all, okay? Here comes uh, Charlie Wallace, and let me go here, and uh, there's uh, Jeff, and there is um, uh, 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 Brian Neary. Hello, Brian. Anyway, uh, yeah. Oh, you're fine. You're doing fine, Jeff. You're perfect. Don't don't touch a thing. So I will okay. admit them. All. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, 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 Brian, are you okay now? I'm here. Brian, have you, can you hear us, Brian? Br Brian? No. <laughs> you can hear us, Brian. Can you say yes so we can hear you? Oh, we you! Can't. I hate you! I hate you! Uh, yes, yes. No, I'm just on my other computer, man. My my company's not doing Zoom anymore, so I tried to log in, and I'm probably gonna get in trouble. With. You're gonna get in trouble. What? Are you at the office? No, no, I'm at home. Oh, you're at home. Is uh, okay. Uh, I never can tell where you are. <laughs> yeah, I've been in the office too much. I haven't got a haircut in like in four weeks. Really. I'm gonna I'm gonna do this. Yeah. I'm gonna put the earphones on tonight because everybody's a little off. Yeah, yeah. So Sorry. how was how are you, how was your uh, well? It, it's you know it, for me to ask you on this show how was your weekend is a little late, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, well, yep. I forget what I did on the weekend. What did you do on the weekend? Oh. uh... I just had to think of Adrian's schedule. So she had a birthday. I had to jump her off there. And um, she had a birthday. Yeah. How old is she now? No, no, no. It was uh, her friend's birthday. Or oh, friend's birthday. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah. I wouldn't want to think I missed Adrian's birthday. No. Marjorie will remind you. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> everything good with you, what, Charlie? Yeah. 
Busy, busy. Busy, busy. And and uh, Jeff, you're da still awesome. down. You're still down in Atlanta, right? I am. Yeah. I, I will tell you that that the problem in uh, Atlanta about the lake, uh, the the water squirting all over that house. Yeah. It they fixed it. They fixed However, it. Yeah. A day after they fixed it, it happens in some other location. Oh boy. All right. Well, all I know so, is I, I asked, uh, she didn't call us the other day, and I thought maybe Amy was, uh, 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 not, not Amy, uh, Mandy. Mandy. Oh, God, I'm losing You said it. that on the show, too. Did I really? Yeah, yeah. I remember like a couple of weeks ago, yeah. Mandy uh, 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 said, well, she would, this was busy and couldn't call because I was worried that she'd gotten stuck in the flood down there. And uh, she said, "No." She says, "What flood?" Apparently, it wasn't. It hmm. wasn't as all over Atlanta as they made it out to be on the six thirty news. So, you know, uh, doesn't sound terrible. So, whatever. Hmm. So anyway, uh, I uh, I have nothing to talk about. Absolutely nothing, uh, except that we're uh, this is our last night of taking care of the cat. Uh -huh. And of course, it's the last day, so all of a sudden the cat has become terribly warm and fuzzy. Uh. <laughs> you know, cat's so smart. Uh, well, well, yeah. What she's saying is basically, boy, you're gonna miss me. Yeah, you know. But uh, no, we had the cat here. She, when we first had her here, I think she was three years old or something, and you know, when they're that age, they're. She used to run down the hall in the middle of the night while we're trying to sleep, and it sounded like horses galloping. Okay, and she would boom, 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 and um, now she can barely walk at a good pace. Uh, uh -oh. she, she's now about nine years old, eight, nine years old, about Adrian's age, actually, <laughs> uh, and uh, and she. Um, She's a little on the tubby side, shall we say, you know. Um, and uh, so she just kind of like lies there and says, pet me, you know, make me feel good. And, uh, but she's still, you know, it's still nice to have a cat around the house. I would have another cat right now, except at my age, you know, I mean, that cat's going to look at me every day and go, you know, long after I, you're gone, I'm still going to be here. You know, every other cat I lived with I figured, uh, you know, they, they, I'd have to. They, I was going to outlive them, and uh, now, so I can't. I can't bring myself to get a cat because I don't want the cat to be an orphan, you know. So, isn't that a horrible thing to do at my time of life? Gee, I might not live long enough to keep a cat around. So, yeah, these people. A lot of people walk dogs here on the street. Mm -hmm. And there's a there's a couple that always walks their dog. He's a big, you know, old like a, a Labrador retriever or something. Mm -hmm. And um, all of a sudden, I saw the dad not walk the dog for a little while. He's just walking by, and then all of a sudden, I saw the dog was really small. <laughs> and the lady always talks to me, so yes. Yeah. So I said, "Oh, uh, did your dog shrink?" <laughs> she said, "No, the other one died." So, oh, so she got a new so, one. <laughs> yeah, they got a they got a replacement, but they're very. They're very old, so I'm like, oh my god, why'd you get a why'd you get a young dog and now it's gonna find you? Yeah, yeah, life. <laughs> yeah, I, I I I don't understand that myself either. So where is everybody tonight? Mm -hmm. We said they'd be us four would be the left, right? We said four of us would be the ones left of this show. Really? Yeah, we said that a long time ago. Oh really? Oh okay. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think we don't have Alan any longer. He's up there, apparently not calling tonight. And uh, who else is, uh, you know, I mean, Tony, you out there? Oh, God, I never Tony thought I'd, <laughs> never thought I'd want Kevin. Huh? <laughs> Kevin, too. Oh, Kevin. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. But, you know, people do have lives besides this. Yeah. Uh, there's a, there's a, awesome. you, you, know, you know, so since we're going to talk about nothing tonight, so there's, you know, there's the show, The Pimple Popper, The Dr. Pimple Popper. Dr. Pimple maybe. Popper, yeah. You know, there's another one. It's called Crack Addict. 
Have you seen about that one? chiropractors? Yes, it's a uh -huh. TLC, and it's a chiropractor. And this lady talks to people, you know, and they say, this one lady, oh, okay, so one guy was like a gym rat and all that stuff, and he was having problems and sad story, leukemia and all that stuff when he was younger and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Anyways, so then it goes to a chiropractor, and then they do an x-ray, and then, you know, it's like one of those shows where they, oh, they show the x-ray, and they say, oh, we're going to do this and this and this to him to make this, you know, these, these joints a little bit better and stuff like that. Yeah. And then sure enough, he, he, the, the doctor lies him down and she starts getting on, you know, moving stuff a little bit and crack. And I don't know if they amplify the sound or something, but I had to change to. it right away. Yeah, I had to change it right away because she was with this one lady who was very well endowed, like naturally, right? So I'll say it like that. And she had sort of the lump on her back and so because her posture's not good. So if they were, she's telling me, you know, with your posture, that hump will sort of go away. And when you get older, you don't want that. And she got her on there with her neck, and I had to change it because she was rated just like, you know, popcorn. And oh really, my God, it, it really is addictive. I, I start watching those videos, and next thing you know, it's four hours later. Well, I I, I tried watching Doctor Pimple Popper. Oh yeah. And I'm sorry, I, I one zit, and I was out of the, <laughs> you know. Yeah, I just I just couldn't uh, I couldn't go for it. So I don't know if cracking backs is necessarily going to well, it's it's better than popping zits, I suppose. But I like that sound. Stephanie yeah. always cracks everything in her body, and I yeah. Any uh, anybody here go to a chiropractor? Yeah, you do. See, I, I have been. Nope. My dad disowned me for doing that, but heck, he's the only one who made my back feel good. Why did he disown you? He's a doctor. He's a regular medical doctor. I agree with him. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but he couldn't fix my back. Oh. <laughs> the chiropractor popped my back, and I felt great. <laughs> well, as they say in the Himalayas, oh, my baking yak. <laughs> baking yak. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much, folks. I'll be here all night. Anyway. <laughs> Monday. No, I, you know, Marjorie kept, kept saying to me, oh, you've got to go to the chiropractor. You've got to go to it. And I told her, chiropractors, it's a phony business, okay? I don't care what you say, it's a phony business. I like a doctor who went to school, who's got a medical degree, and who on top of everything else has one function that he can perform that a chiropractor can't, and that's prescribe medication. That's the problem. That's the problem. Uh, I would be high on drugs. And I couldn't go to work and do my job. The chiropractor cracked my back. I had no drugs. I was at work the next day. <laughs> and did he? What fit? a boring life. No drugs. <laughs> did he fix your problem? Oh, he fixed it because it would come back. You had to go in. You know, oh yeah. Well, that's the thing. Weeks. You always have to go back to them. <laughs> Now I so well, I finally after Marjorie too. nudged me like crazy. Oh, you got to do you got to go see him, okay? So I go see him. So he says, blah blah blah. blah we'll do this. He does a little pushing, a little pro pro probing. Nothing where he's cracking my back, okay? But and he says, you know, you're gonna, it's, it's going to take about ten visits to see any real <laughs> help here. And I'm thinking to myself, funny. I've never been to a doctor before who said, you know, I can't do anything. It's going to take 10 visits before you're going to feel better. Somehow, no, with know. other... I cut my toes off. Oh. <laughs> it took a lot of visits. <laughs> oh, well, that's a new show, Dr. Toe Chopper. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, that's what I say, oh, boy. Yeah. This is a fun day for me. A fun day for you? Why would why yeah. was particularly fun? Well, a couple of weeks ago I had a termite inspection, Ooh. and they came in today and drilled a bunch of holes in the wood under the house, in the attic and around, and had uh, termosite sprayed in the holes. It's a foam that comes out of a can. They spray in the holes. That way you don't have to have the house tented. Oh, really? He's got woody woodpeckers in, it sounds like. Yeah, because they, usually they tent the house, right? And then they... Yeah. Well, they can, and that gets more, it gets, you know, 100%. But, you know, tenting the house, you got to move a lot of stuff out of the house in order for them to do it. And I'm not in shape to do that. 
<clears throat> so, so do they? So, so, do they guarantee the termites will go away? Or are these like chiropractors? No, no, they, <laughs> you <Come> back. <laughs> they have a they have a one year guarantee, and they tell you about nine months out. Call us back, and we'll give you a free inspection. And if we find termites in the area we treated, we'll retreat that area for no, free. Wait a minute, hold on. A second. Find them in a different area. <laughs> we'll, we'll, wash me. We'll, it'll be seventy five dollars. Who cares? Wait, you're you're going, you're, you're going to the guys who got rid of your termites, or supposedly got rid of your termites. And if they come back, they will come back and take care of it for free, right? During the first, it's got a one year guarantee, yes. What's to guarantee oh. that these guys are gonna come back, look at your house, and because they don't wanna spend the money, say, no termites. <laughs> well, I, I actually had, I, I had the thing. orange oil people come out the guy walked around the outside of the house yeah. said, you have termites, mm -hmm. never okay. came into the house, didn't go in the attic, didn't go in the crawl space. He said, you got termites, uh, $6,500 treatment oh. for, us to, for us to drill holes and put orange oil in it. And I said, you know, you're a licensed pest control. Can I get, instead of orange oil, can I get Termidor, which is the gold standard, comes in cans and you put the little funnel in and foam goes into the wall, into the into the hole. Yeah. No, we don't like that stuff. We like orange oil. Okay. So the, the, the people that use the actual pesticide, termicide is what it really is called, um, the guy came out and for $1,300 did the whole house. Yeah, that's pretty good. It's cheap. And yeah. Unfortunately, I, I, they I, drilled so many holes in the house, it just <laughs> collapsed. He's going to close the door and everybody's going to come down. <laughs> but, but, but he, he does a much um, better job at inspecting. So. I could have got you a guy off of the, off of the BQE for about 500 I'm joking. <laughs> I, I could have sent you one to the house, don't Tony. Turbines are attracted to you. They probably, I don't have them. How do you know you have them? Though? Did you see, like, the wood corroded or something? Yeah, they, 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 the little, how, how do you put this, uh, poop. And when they eat, they, they expel this stuff. And when it gets too full... They bore a hole through the sheetrock or the wood, oh, and, you, wow. and the pellets end up on your floor. Uh, could, could, could it look like mouse mouse dropping? Oh, well, uh, you mean the oh, poop, much, the, much the termite poop a, pellets a, wind up on your floor? Oof. Yeah, after they eat it, they kick they kick it out of the hole, Ooh. and and then the, and it drops on the floor, you know, right in the. And so this guy was. I mean, he found termites in the room I'm in. in really. He found termites in my bathroom <laughs> in my roommate's room and all this was for 1300 i mean the it cost $210 for the inspection but he was here for three and a half hours the orange oil people were here for 45 minutes wow can i yeah, ask a question mm -hmm. how do you get termites is it like almost like getting mice does it come from another house every 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 place in this country has termites in it tony so, your, your house probably has termites yeah really probably. oh yeah yeah, but so you have options nowadays. You can have the spot treatment, which they don't guarantee to kill every termite like the like the gas. Thing. I actually had the pest guy coming tomorrow. I just had him. I, I want I want to know how much something was costing. In our building, they they got through with the whole you know uh, scaffolding on the building. The minute they got yeah. rid of the scaffolding, yeah, I you saying yeah. it, yep. all of a sudden they put up some more stuff, and it was oh, like shit. a green yeah. shed against the side of the building. <laughs> And Are it they turns the out, again? what? Are they going to point the bricks again like they did last no, no, time? No, 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 no. Let me finish the story. Yeah, oh, really, yeah. Tony. Just Stop don't it. get so anxious, Tony. I'm sorry. I heard you pull me. That's what it I turns it. out. They're yeah. they're they're uh, redoing the foundation in the building, certain parts of the building, because the foundations, after I guess 123, 24 years, wow. is uh, falling apart. So. so you moved in when the place was brand new. That's kind of cool. Yeah, that's really nice. Yeah, I was its first yes. person here, and uh, yeah, hey, fuck you. Anyway, uh, you have you have, you have any more old jokes you, you want to do uh, before no. we? Is it is it that boring of a night? <laughs> I could have gone to bed. I didn't get much sleep last night. Really? Part of getting older, you, you you know, some nights I get a really good, I can get like 12 hours of sleep, and then some nights, I no matter what I do, I get three or four hours. 
Well, I wish I would just go to sleep and just sleep, but I wake up about every two hours, look at my I watch and go, too. I got another eight, four hours. Yeah. Now I got another two hours. And now I got work, another. While you're hour. awake, you might you as well go too. piss. Listen to your radio. Yeah. I might as well what? Go piss while you're awake. Well, I do. I only pee, pee once a night. Oh, yeah. lucky And sometimes you. I don't even. Every two hours. Every two hours. Oh yeah. well, it's time. It's t time to go see the urologist. <laughs> no, I go on the end of the month before I go. I tried that. That did not work. Well, you, you, you know, you know what they do for for that problem. Uh, a urologist does. The rest of your toes are going. <laughs> so. He's in the wrong area. Yeah. Hi, Kevin. Hi, Alex. <laughs> My termite guy actually, actually lives in the Alex city. talking, sorry. Uh, yeah, he, yeah, somebody else was talking, Alan. I thought we had moved on from termites. So far tonight, so far tonight, it's been pimple popping, back cracking, and termite drilling termite. and now we're on to something else with kevin so okay. let kevin change the subject to something you might have no knowledge of <laughs> and it'll shut you up for at least five minutes okay that sounds good talk kevin kevin i got two broken ribs Ooh. did Ow. you just get the two broken like ribs no i broke them last week you, uh, how did you break them what did you do uh, i was at the car show and the car ran Trying over you? What? Back. Yeah, uh, I saw a video. Kevin was drunk. Running all around. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> no, really? Yeah, I was hammered. I was opening up the back door and leaned over to open up the back door and ended up on my my leg slipped out and I hit the seat frame. Oh, you look even hurt. I landed on that. It was like last Friday, Memorial Weekend. Now, yeah. they don't do anything for a broken rib. No, just like a toe. Yeah. A little toe. Yeah. Up. Yeah, yeah. I think you give you pain pills. No, I already have those. Yeah, oh. but I mean, uh, they, they uh, um, if you crack no, they a rib, do they, don't, they don't do anything. No, I actually went about four or five. Actually, when I got back on Monday, I went. I went to the doctor on Tuesday and figured I better go make sure it's what's going on with it. And he poked it and said, "Yeah, it's broken." I said, "Do I need an X-ray?" He goes, "Nope, I can feel it moving." Yeah. The other one's probably cracked. Well, and do That's they? All he said. And do they fix themselves? Yep. He said just go home. And then I had to tear out the carpet and the baseboard and the room next door because we were uh, redoing a bedroom. That and was you did my that when we got with back. You so. did that with broken ribs. Uh huh. Move furniture and everything. Bravo! Yeah. No, I mean, Bravo! I, I broke a rib once in a fight while I was on duty, and it hurt to breathe. It yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can't turn over on my left side while I'm sleeping. That no, but I mean, just feel good. sitting in the seat and breathing in and out because your chest expands and goes in and out, and it would hurt. Your yeah, chest, God knows your chest is expanding. I just don't breathe, that's all. <laughs> then it doesn't hurt. Problem solved. Huh? What did you say? I said the I just don't breathe. <clears throat> Man, no, problem no, solved. I was asking... Uh, Mr. Wallace, what he said. What? Is it problem solved? Just don't breathe, then it won't hurt. Yeah. <laughs> what is that T-shirt? Don't say? breathe, laugh, cough, or sniff. That's all. Yeah. What does that uh, T-shirt say? It says, "Be oh, it's over there. That ah, wrong. Be greater <laughs> than normal. Greater than average. Be greater. Be than greater than average. Than average. Uh, oh, yeah. that's nice. All yeah. you got to do is know math in order to figure out what it says." Okay. Yeah, but see, see, when, if a woman... Oh, uh, never mind. What say? <laughs> what were you going to say? You know, sometimes, you know, there's women with shirts like, not like that, but like close, and I'm staring at it, and then it's like, I have to make a comment about the shirt, what it says, because if I don't, then they think that I'm staring at them. So uh, if they had one of those this shirts... Happened, you... This happened oh, last no. week. This happened last week. This lady had a shirt, and I was like looking at it, and I was trying to figure it out. And then, and then, uh, what are you looking I, at? I had yeah, to, that's what exactly. I wanted. I had to, I had really to tell her or something about the shirt because what did the shirt? Really what what did the shirt say? My eyes are up here. Now I don't even remember. I don't even remember what this shirt was. 
It was what was under the shirt that he was checking out. What? No, what? Oh, no, 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 no. What? What does the shirt say? What did the shirt say? I forget. It was some some company or something, and I was thinking about that company, and then, yeah, it was a vendor. And did she comment that you were looking at her breasts? No, I was staring and we're talking and I'm looking at it and said, oh shoot, that's right. The, we bought something. I, I was trying to remember what we bought from that company. Mm -hmm. And then she's talking, she looked at me and I'm all, oh, hey, that's the company that we buy blah, 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 blah for, you know? I was like, oh. It said 7-Eleven on the shirt and he gets his slurpees there. Yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, uh, let me see here. Did anybody see uh, the... Uh, the thing with Fauci before Congress? I heard he dropped a hammer on that. Oh, oh, I mean... Did, it, did you see John Stewart? Did you see John Stewart mention it? Yeah. No. And then he said he said that uh, he contracted rabies and he had a uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene picture there with a mouth open. <laughs> <laughs> it was horrible. I can't, I, can't I can't believe... I'm not you know. going to call you doctor because I don't consider you a doctor. She said that? Yeah. Yes. She's in Mr. Fauci. I, I can't believe the way they're treating him, the Republicans. Well, all no. I'm saying is, please, this man saved my life, okay? He saved uh, hundreds of thousands he, yeah. of lives. Yeah, what about the AIDS crisis? He was the main guy on that movie. Yeah, yeah but, he saved he was. millions of lives over his career. He, I remember abs reading. You're, you're absolutely right, Tony. He was in the world him of all the people like him. He was the main guy that, that found... Uh, uh, some some things for longevity and and there's another Chinese wait. doctor that worked on Magic Johnson. I remember when I was reading Time on him. What he kind of doctor was he? What kind of doctor? Uh, <laughs> what well, kind of food to eat? I mean, Alex, how does she mix up a derogatory remark like that and you get away with it? Like so, like she's an idiot, really. Well, because she's from uh, Georgia. And she's from upstate Georgia, where she has a constituency that thinks, oh, she's really a gutsy, brave woman. No, she's just stupid. The rest of the world I thinks the opposite. I would like to know her SAT that she's so brilliant. <laughs> well, all I'm saying is, is that, you know, have a little more respect for this guy. You know, you don't, don't you know, you may disagree with his assessment of things, but treat him, you asked him to come speak before you, treat him with a certain amount of respect. You know, it kind of backfired on Trump because <laughs> now Trump's got to back walk why he kept him on. Oh, that is true. He was there to the end, him and the lady. Yeah, guy. you know, after Fauci, if they gave him the shit, people were saying, well, you know, uh, uh, President Trump, why did, if he was that bad, and that bad of a doctor, why did you keep him on and, and not hire and, somebody? And by the way, by the way, if if Trump is putting him down, just remember that Fauci played the decent good soldier in that situation. He didn't try to make Trump look like a moron, even when he said, "Hey, can we, uh, you know, put some, I don't, oh, uh, nope. uh, uh, drink bleach, bleach." Yeah. And, and the guy's a registered Republican too, Fauci. I mean, you know, you want. Yeah. Is he a re re registered yeah. Republican? Yeah. Uh, they're yeah, he served yeah. under seven presidents or something. I mean, you know. Yeah, he he served under the he was there for Reagan. I know that. Yeah. That was AIDS, Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, this guy's just like, you know, I mean, he's he's like an angel, you know, and and these people at eighty two years old are going at him like he just. Killed the president. Well, also these these morons who aren't doctors who don't know what they're talking about. All they want to do is they want to get snide and get their two cents worth of snide in yeah. in these uh, in these hearings. And what, what a waste of the for? taxpayers' money to hold those hearings. It's a you waste know? of breath. Yeah, but I mean, it, it, you know, but I mean, the way they were treating him, I was just going, geez. Well, oh, they want to go after him now. I mean, you know, legally they want to. Hold him in contempt of court or something. Well, why contempt do they want to go after him? Contempt of He's not, he hasn't even been <clears throat> holding the post down for maybe a because, couple of years Because now. he wouldn't show up and testify in Congress, so they want to hold him in contempt of Congress. What do you mean? He showed up. Yeah. Well, I don't know. He was there for quite a bit. He, was, he yeah. showed up. I, I, I watched part of it. So the Well, news. then obviously you know he showed up. I don't know why. He was months ago. Huh? He was there months ago. This is the second round. Oh. Yeah. 
He's never. I, I mean, he was there like a year or two ago. He's never refused to go in front of a congressional no. committee. Never. You know, it's funny. Is he was here for Zika. He was here for avian flu. He was here for everything that my company helped out with. The we did all the uh, pre pre releases for them for detection, and he was there through all those years. And they don't say anything about all the lives he saved there. And then, yeah, yeah, all of them about this stuff. And it's well, you know, the other thing, the other one that got it in the last couple of days was Merrick Garland. Yep. Uh, and, but he didn't let him get away with it. He just told him, he said, you know, I'm sick and tired of this because we are tr only trying to do our job and we're not trying to do it with any favoritism or anything like that. And as a matter of fact, that whole situation that went on in New York, we had nothing to do with. No, that was, that was a local case. It was not a federal case and we had nothing to do with it. So quit saying that, you know, that, oh, Biden is weaponizing the, uh, the Justice Department. For what, you know? Um, and it's interesting that Trump says uh, he's weaponizing, the Biden's weaponizing the Justice Department, and then uh, Trump is very happy to say, as soon as I get in office, I'm going to get even, and I'm going to have my Justice Department go after these people. About but he, and then and then he's complaining solved. about it being weaponized. I, Nothing I, in this country will get resolved. We're going to go I, back I, and forth like this every yeah. presidency, and and they're going to try to cancel out everything that the former president just acted enacted, and it's just going to go back and forth, and that all of the everyone in the U.S. is going to suffer because nothing will get done. All and that's the reason done, why all this stuff will get why resolved. each and every one of you should vote for a Democrat. Okay, so there's consistency. Both him yes. and Kamala Harris were doing fundraisers this this last weekend in the in the Bay Area. Yeah, he's coming tomorrow. Who is? Trump. 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 Oh, oh yeah, did? and Trump's coming for uh, 300, 300 grand a seat, and he's sold the whole thing out. Three hundred and fifty thousand dollars a seat. Is that right? Well, that was three hundred, but it's who in cares? Hollister. Yeah. It's in Hollister. Who would pay three hundred? Yeah, I'm having them at my house. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was sold out, but they only sold five seats. So, you know. <laughs> it's, really... it's the biggest crowd ever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Beautiful crowd. He beautiful really, crowd. has he perfect, has he sold it out? Because I, I question. Yeah, it was in California. Yeah. It's in California. Yeah. And then it's he's going to Beverly California. Hills, and then he's going to uh, uh, Beverly Hills and, um, well, somewhere else down there, and same thing. And he talks so much shit about Hollywood and everybody. Yeah. And he's going he right down there to raise money. He, he, he just he talks through his ass. Well, I, I'll give a reason why he's coming to the Bay Area to raise money. money. No, no, no. I understand that, that we all And understand. the tech people are supporting him. The tech people are supporting him because they're looking for if he gets in office, tax he'll break. he'll 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 uh, give them tax breaks. Exactly. Wow. Well, uh, Elon Musk is is for Trump now, isn't he? Oh, I can't take yeah. that guy. Sure he is. Yep. He says he hasn't given any money to either one of them. But somebody that wealthy is going to pay Trump money and pay Biden money, and that way he's, he's in good. Well, that's money. usually what most companies do. They hedge that's their right. bets, you know, and give yep. both both people. Yep. 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 Did you have your hand up there? Ev? Yeah, you know, that's another reason why I really – in, in, is enamored with Bill Gates because he would never back an animal like Trump. And like, he doesn't mind giving his money away. Like Alex, when is, if you have so much money after a while, what do you really need it for? You can't even spend it. What do you want to help? Well, people? I mean, it, uh, uh, Bill Gates, who we all thought was an asshole at one point, suddenly realizes, that, you know, he's giving money to everything and making sure that he's doing, spending his money to help good causes where uh, Steve Jobs did nothing. You know, we, used to think, we used to think Steve Jobs is the great guy, and, you know. Uh, 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 well, I don't know. You got Steve Jobs to think. If there was no Steve Jobs, the computer you use. Uh, no, no. Me. You know that something? It, I got news for you. It would have happened anyway. Yeah, they, right, they would have killed you. Know, it. Uh, Felix would have maybe did something. Somebody would have Somebody would have called called Apple, it would have been called the toilet. What? <laughs> what? I know, bad joke. Yeah, you know what's funny? Would somebody explain that joke to me? It wasn't a joke. It was Alan. We have valuable minutes on this show. Please don't. 
It was my sarcasm. No, but, but the fact was that uh, uh, um, uh, um, Bill Gates has really turned into being a pretty yeah. good guy with his money. And He's he felt, felt exactly that way. If I don't spend it on these kind of good works, when I die, where's it going to go? Yeah, I mean, I would do the same thing. If I had his money, why wouldn't you want to have your name where you can actually help people? Yeah. Or, you know, and, yes, and yeah, yes, yes, uh, Brian. I said this before, but my early years at SEFI, at Bill Melinda Gates Foundation, they gave us a lot of money for funding. <clears throat> so they do, uh, so we're, when we were developing the TB test, uh, through DNA, so they have a 123 year old uh, blood culture test that they used to do in Africa. The problem is after they take it, <clears throat> after they take their blood culture, you know, it takes uh, about two weeks until they can figure out if they have TB or not. By that time, they've already gone back to their, their tribes and they can't find the people anymore. Yeah. So with Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation help, we developed a test through DNA, so it takes 45 minutes. So we have, actually have guys on motorcycles going from yeah. village to village doing a TB test and then they're right there they keep them there until you know they leave and they also do some other stuff for, for antibiotics and stuff so you know, they're not hurting he, people he, he was a good gives gives a lot of, of antibiotics to people and they don't really need it sometimes they just need some simple medicine so he was a, uh, but, he but was no a, gets very 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 uh, very useful with he them. was a good spokesman in the early days of of uh, covid yeah, because him and Fauci are friends. Yeah. They're and he's a, he's a Republican. And we also got, uh, God, what's the guy that has the Berkshire Hathaway? Um, um, Warren Buffett? Warren Buffett. He's a staunch Republican, but he said he would, he? Never, he would never support Trump. If Trump gets elected, you think the economy's uh, going downhill now? Wait. This no, guy will run the country into bankruptcy. He, I was going to ask you a question, you guys. Do you mm -hmm. really think you know, they were the elite? I don't believe a guy like Gates and these guys, Buffett, are staunch or anything. I think they're free thinkers. I don't think they would just vote. They would say, hey, let me see what this guy's made up of before I just throw. I can't see them voting party line. They're too smart for that, I think. Uh, I, I just can't well, see. Gates, Gates is also a Republican, and he won't vote for Trump. Well, he's smart, yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, well. Let me he's got see. a lot of money too, so I'm trying to uh, here. He, I'm trying to get something to uh, our uh, to uh, uh, Amy Manuel, um, hmm. uh, because I'm having to check my email now, and I don't know where she sent it from. Where'd she send that from? Oh, that's uh, that's uh, um, a text. Uh, only I don't have it as a text. That's strange. Uh, Amy Manuel. Well, uh, let me see here. Uh, check your email. Okay, I've got to, excuse me, folks. Uh, what is it? Uh, it's, uh, oh God, why, does she, why doesn't she ever get herself <laughs> checked out on her equipment like at five o'clock at night? Why, why does she do it while I'm, I'm yeah. Yeah. Okay. Here's the security code. Um, the security code is three zero five three. Say that again. Two. My right my there. termite guy lives in Hollister. That's yeah. What I'm, yeah. I'm at. End of termites. Hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. He likes it down there. He says it's a neat little town. It's been a long time since I've been there. Yeah. Anyway, if if she's listening, Ooh. I did it, you know. But God, why she? Why does she always wait mm. till the last minute? Kind of like Jack did, huh? Huh? Yeah, so I I was thinking the same thing. Well, no, oh, she's been pretty good, you know. Yes. She's but, doing a good job. She has a lot of things going on. Yeah. 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 You bet. Yeah. You bet. Well, I mean, but it's just that if you have a piece of equipment and you don't know if it's going to work from a remote location, try it early on in the mm -hmm. day. And if you got a problem, I can sit with you and mm -hmm. and solve the problem. But you know, just before you go, twenty minutes before you're going on the air. Hmm. Anyway, but uh, but uh, overall, she's been uh, help helpful. Who yep. who is Bill? Anybody know Bill? Bill. Bill. I think you said Phil. I thought maybe Phil was calling. Bill. But Bill, wait, let me cat. let me just Bill, let me just put my camera on here, folks. And yeah, let me let me see who let me see who Bill is. 
<laughs> Bill, are you there, Bill? Bill, are you there? It's got to be that it's going to be something horrible. I got a bad feeling about Yeah, it. so it. let me uh, remove. Like breaking bed. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm going to remove a Bill here. Not report to Zoom. Remove Bill. There we go. Oh, my okay. God. Scary. Went to Tony again. Uh, all right. Oh, my what? God. <laughs> I got another dog client. Tony, how many dogs do you have? Now? Oh, I, I was going to tell you guys. Uh, funny, I heard you saying that. I was laughing because I was leaving Kansas' yard today, locking the gate. This dog, I was like, it's every time we leave, it's like Kramer or Kramer. He sticks his hat out. I love this dog. So then the lady upstairs and her boyfriend, she works in advertising ox in the city. Mm -hmm. She goes, oh, she says, Tony. She goes, yeah. She says, I'm just going home. She says, I need to know if you can maybe, uh, if I can text you some dates because Milo needs to be walked. I said, I'm going, my, I guess she does advertising, but they let her work from home. But now the city, the job, wants her to do presentations in Manhattan on Wednesdays and other days. So she's going to text me. Now I got four dogs, Alex. Next week I got 14 walks. Really? Like, now I'm having to remove about 10 different yeah. people. That I they... walk them early. I, I do it on my time. So when I come back from my drop my stuff off, I have them all spread out. So, so I like Kansas. Tony, yeah, he's my favorite, Alex. He's so Tony cute. Takes, Tony takes Kansas by Trump's old house, mm -hmm. and Kansas holds his bowel movement until he gets <laughs> in front there. You know what he does, though, Alex? Does. I always go by one house that has uh, the Trump flags, and I always try to hope he takes his shit in front of him. <laughs> it's either the shit, I says, can't she go pee pee? Or he lifts the leg up. Goodbye. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. I That's love that good. dog. He's so good, yeah. Alex, the dog is attached to me. They, Brian and Jane, uh, the husband and wife, they says, all we have to do is say, where's Tony? He runs right to the window and he's looking out the window waiting for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's a good guy. Yeah, I love when you send me pictures and, uh, or send me a text and say, yeah, Kansas took a dump on Trump's lawn. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what a smart cat, dog. You do have the cats and the cats just walk away from you. You know what I noticed too? What? Male dogs, I never had one. They'll lift their leg anywhere in piss. It's like I try not to. I try to keep him in the street, but sometimes you look like he's not doing it. Like he, like they throw like the the food circulars, like and they tie him up. He just leaves like I, I, had, a, I, I we had a dog. Right we, on we, song, man. we had a dog named Kipper, and and Kipper was a retarded dog. Was he? Yeah. He, one time we saw him, and all the dogs were like lined up in front of a tree. You know how they can, sometimes get in a line, and then oh, they really? go use the tree, and then somebody else uses the tree, and somebody else uses the tree. And then Kipper would walk over and squat. My brother's dog's done that all his life. Really? Yeah. They don't lift the yeah. legs, the boys. I call him a big pussy. Oh, yeah. I never knew that. He's Your only got brother or the he, dog? He thinks me out. When he does Both of them. <laughs> Both of them. Really? Wow. Yeah. He's a, he's a big Akita, too. It's a fighting dog, a, a, Chinese, a oh, wow. Japanese fighting dog. Yeah. Wow. Wow. And he says, stands over there and he squats about halfway down. I go, what the hell is he doing? Oh, he's taking a piss. Oh, he, wussy. Wow. Yeah. Well, you know, that's a big dog. Probably live, lifting that leg is like yeah. breaking a rib or something. <laughs> Yeah, those leg muscles are heavy. <laughs> yeah, he could he could end up breaking big. a rib. He's about the size of a German Shepherd. He ain't that big. No. Yeah. But anyway, so that was Kipper. He was a I loved Kipper. He was a wonderful dog. We named him after Yom Kipper, which is the High Holy oh, Days. Nice. That's the High Holy uh, Day. Uh, yeah. uh, high Jewish Holy uh, High Holy Days of Jews. Is that and, is that September? I think and, it is. And right we now. got him on Yum Kipper, so we called him Kipper, and people went, "Okay, oh, Kipper," you know, we, which would be <laughs> yeah, nice. Yeah. But no, we we really wanted to be the worst Jews alive, and we named him Kipper. <laughs> well, sure I like that. Yeah. <laughs> so. It wasn't Kippa, K I P P A H. No, no, no. <laughs> it was Kipper. Anyway, you had a cat with a Jewish name too, didn't well, you? Shabbos. 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 I like that name, yeah. Right. And Shabbos. I had a female uh, Siamese cat named Yantuv. Uh, Shabbos means Shabbos. Sabbath and Yantuv means holiday. Yeah, I like Shabbos, yeah. Uh, no wonder all your neighbors know you're Jewish. <laughs> well, they know my they know my animals <laughs> are. You again. <laughs> you see the, you know. Are you sure you're not Italian, Alex? I mean, no, Jewish, Jewish and Italians complain. We complain. Yeah. Uh, so um, uh, the latest, of course, on Donald Trump is that he is... Uh, 
He is threatening to get even with everybody. <laughs> yep. I'm afraid what he's going to do. Yeah. We still have no idea what he's going to do if he becomes president. Yeah. What I'm waiting Before. for, they they have the debate happening in, what, three weeks, something like yeah, that? You're right. Yeah, you're right. Come up. Yeah. Yeah. And the thing I'm waiting for is yeah. I want to hear the answers to questions by Biden, who will give you a thoughtful answer on, you know, the economy and uh, uh, immigration and things like that. And Donald Trump, I'll bet you, for most of the hour, or however long it's going to be, will do nothing but complain about how he's being treated badly. Absolutely. That's, that's his M.O. Yeah. That's, that's what well, he does. I mean, does. he's a crybaby. He, 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 never take, he never takes credit for anything that went wrong in his life. <laughs> no. He's not his fault. Yeah. Being that uh, tomorrow is the 80th anniversary of D-Day, what do you think he's going to do tomorrow? Do you think he's going to complain about all the losers that went down? Yeah, and yeah lost again. The war. Yeah. Well, you remember Asshole. last time when he was in office and they had a thing at uh, at Omaha Beach and at the cemetery there. Yeah. yeah. He went. He wouldn't go. But he, w he was there, but he wouldn't he go would because it was going to mess his hair up. <laughs> but that's, I, that's where all real. the losers were. Huh? That's where all the losers were. Oh, and it was raining. Yeah. Remember, it was it raining. It was raining, and he didn't want to yeah. get his wonderful dew wet. Piece of shit. <laughs> you know, and it wouldn't... No, a piece of shit is worth more than he is. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. I think Biden's going to make a nice speech. I'm going to listen to it. Yeah, well, I think that... Uh, I, I don't know. How do you think Biden's going to do it? What do you think his current chances are? He's what, the election? Mm-hmm. He's going to win. He's going to win. Yeah. Right, you're off the mouth to God's ear. God, yeah, you're right. I mean, I, Trump I president. By now, Trump should have named a vice president. He should be talking about how he's going to make America great again, what he's going to do. Lower taxes. What do you mean he should have... He should, wait a minute. Rate. He should have announced a, a, a vice presidential choice? Why? I think so. Why? Well, when do you do it? Well, usually you did it at the convention. Oh, okay. I don't know these things. Yeah. Everybody, that was a little thing that was left over once you finally yeah. figured out who was going to be running as president. Why is it not Marjorie Trash Gang Green? I like that nickname, Trash Gang. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't think he wants her either, to be honest with you. You know. Well, she, uh, although for a I while think, she yeah. was doing her job to try and, you know, go for it. But they say it's now, who is it? The guy who wrote uh, um, Hillbilly, uh, what was that book? Hillbilly El Elegy? Elegy, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, between him and uh, the, the black oh. guy. Who's the black guy? Or the guy oh, who? Who? Tim Scott? Uh, I think he's going to get it. Yeah, uh, uh, he thinks he's black, but he's not really. <laughs> Look like, in the mirror. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't know. And who else? Oh, yeah. Oh, you know, who's just kissing his ass is what's his name down in Florida. Oh, uh, yeah. The Sanctimonious. That he no, not the Sanctimonious. No. Oh, who's the other one then? Oh, yeah. Little Marky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Marco Rubio. The father who oh, killed Marco. Kennedy or something. Grandfather, whatever that Little was. Marco. Little Marco. <laughs> He, he insults him and then they back him. I, I, you can't make this up, really. Actually, I think Trump could actually take a dump on any of these people and they'd still <laughs> say he's the most wonderful person who ever took a dump on me. Take a yep. shit on me next, please. <laughs> yep. So does Santa, uh, not DeSantis, but, uh, but uh, who's the other guy we just talked about, the senator there in Rubio? Rubio, he wasn't mar he wasn't born in this country, was he? Uh, well, he yeah. he's, he's Cuban or or something like that. Was he born here? I, I, I believe I, so. He, he couldn't run for president. If, well, no, he could be if his parents were born here. Yeah. I don't know. Huh. He's eligible to run, though. Is he? He was. If he wants to be president, he has to be born here. Right, yeah, but you can be, you can pick a vice president. Isn't it interesting though that you can well, be? You don't have to be born here. You have to be a natural born citizen, which means you can be born well, uh, from parents who are American citizens, because 
Romney was born in Mexico or someplace, and he ran for president. Yeah, but he was his parents were American. Right, yeah. his parents were American, and somebody else was born in in the Panama Canal. Yeah, who was that? I think what. And what's your what's your senator there, uh, Cruz? He was born out in Canada. He wasn't was born he? in Canada. Yeah. Right. Ted Cruz. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Mega. But what what happens with Trump if he has to travel? Can he can't travel out of the country? Can he being a felon? No. I don't know why that would stop him. Well, I mean, See, right. A lot now. of these countries have laws that say that you can't come to their country if you're a felon. Oh, okay. Well, that, mm -hmm. if the country says you can't come, he can't go to Canada. Canada is one. Yeah, Great Britain's another. He can't go to Great Britain. Oh, really? And boy, are they breathing a sigh of relief. <laughs> <laughs> you can, yeah, exactly. I don't want them. Lucky them. They say something about his gun or something like that. They're taking away his guns or something. Well, yeah, because a felon can't have guns. Yeah, that's right. They said something about that I read too. Jeez. And, and they're not supposed to be able to vote. No, and not in, in, in there. It depends on the state. Oh. Yeah. Uh, California, California, New York, you can vote. You can vote. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it, but in uh, Texas, you can't. Yeah. Marco Rubio was born in Miami, Florida. Oh. So it doesn't okay. matter. Take a drink. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> yeah. Who's, who said he wasn't an American? Well, I, somebody I, asked I, I, I thought he wasn't. Yeah. Boy, Alan, once again, boy, yeah, I'm, I'm glad that we've, uh, we don't have Phil anymore, but we've got Alan. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And, and uh, he Phil is. Phil was the one that told Alan to call in. He's a font of misinformation. It's wonderful, <laughs> Alan. Thank you well, so you much. Well, you didn't know that until, until Charlie looked it up. Oh, by the way, thank you for the antihistamines. Oh, oh yeah. you're welcome. Okay, they work. Alex, he's, Alan, so, thanks. They're working wait, great. Okay. You're welcome, Tony. Do they, have yeah. you tried them? Do they work, Alex? I haven't tried them yet. Okay. But I oh. will. Uh, did they work for you, Tony? Yeah, Alex, fantastic. I use them. I take them, like he said, like at 7 in the morning, because I usually leave my house to get the dog. And you don't get drowsy food. from them or anything? No, and, and I went past the grass, a lot of the parks around where I walked them, and it doesn't even bother me. It's like it just because, had a little tinge, but other than that, the sneak, they, nothing. They do say about them. a lot of these things, they have like non drowsy Benadryl. And I'm going, how good no. can that be? I mean, Benadryl is not non drowsy. Yeah, I've never word. heard of non drowsy. Benadryl. Oh, well, they ben, have non, non drowsy Benadryl. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, Benadryl is a first generation uh, pill. But and as a matter of fact, they use, they use Benadryl in anesthesia sometimes. Really? To help, to help relax you and, and stuff. So, yeah, we can't yeah, protect kids to get them to sleep. Well, really actually, nice. they've come up with a new way to put people to sleep for operations and that's to listen to your opinions <laughs> so, uh, I knew you were gonna go in. It's on Alan I'm just so getting fun. even with you for all the old people jokes that you've been pulling about me I actually don't well, see many well yeah, I guess I did the building okay yeah. don't talk about old I just found out I'm the oldest umpire in the Austin softball umpires association ever <laughs> oh, hey, look who's here. Wait a minute. If I think he's here. Let me just put my uh -oh. picture on just to make sure this isn't Not somebody. Bill Meyer. Here. But it's Don Giller, oh, ladies and oh. gentlemen. Yes, it is Don Giller. Yeah, All right. Yeah. Yes, sir, Re Bob. Wait a minute. Well, hold At on night. a second. Wow. Yeah, yeah, look, there he is. There is uh, uh, Don Giller, who is uh, uh, just one hell of a guy and very funny, too. Oh. Oh, ain't no laughing matter. It ain't no laughing matter. So how have you been? Uh, uh, not great. Um, I came on because uh, you guys are talking about Rubio. Yeah. Rubio cannot. He's ineligible because he's from the same state as Trump. <laughs> ah, good point. Good point. That is true. Yeah. Well, I mean, he can't be a vice president. You can't have a president and vice president from the same state. That oh, I, I didn't that, know that. I, really? That I absolutely. That's in the Constitution. That That's I, why Cheney moved to, moved back to Wyoming back yeah. in 2000. He had yeah. been living in Texas. He had to do that in order yeah. to. Be, Maybe uh, Trump will move to what? Texas. Maybe he'll get shot in the ass. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be better. Go, go hunting. Really? A, a slight hunting accident. 
He happened to be in front of me when I raised the shotgun. <laughs> But oops. Yeah, I know you were a moose. <laughs> well, Dick Cheney had his little hunting accident. So. At least he shot a lawyer. So. But he shot him in the face. That was crazy. I was like, what the hell? They didn't what like the guy. <laughs> wow. Yeah, well, Mark, I... So if you're in from, from the same state, you can't take a person. No. Is that nationwide? Is that a. a that, that, yeah, no, it's that, only in Florida that, and Texas. Yeah, you can't, you can't, you can't have two people from Illinois. You can't have two people from New York. You can't have okay. two people I, from I, California. I understand what you said. I what, just want to make what, sure what, that it was What was the point. thinking on that? What was the thinking on that? Anybody know? Well, because you don't want to. They might have. They might have a like a. a they might favor. That Conf state that you're both conflict from. of interest. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Oh, Hello. that won't stop Trump. Well, Don Giller has decided to call us during the last uh, three minutes of our program, so I think it's we time. should defer to him and find out why he called. And well, for that, that. Only for that. Huh? Only for that, for the Rubio thing. Oh, the Rubio and, thing. And Same. Yeah. He's a. Uh, I had forgotten about that. Yeah. Trump would have to move back to New York, I guess. Rubio I'm sure he'd be happy there. Before. Yeah, but I just don't. I don't understand why that would be true. But I guess it is. I, I if get if get uh, uh, Giller says it's so, it's so. Okay. Well, no, that's, that's the founding fathers. Reason. They put it in the Constitution. So what what happens real quick if you take a vice president that's not a naturally born citizen and the president dies in office that person is going to be president even if they well, then he can't president. run for vice president i would imagine I, don't think, I think both of them have to be natural born citizens oh okay okay then it's, in, that it's in article two of the constitution yep Thank the you. elect the electors shall meet in their respective states and vote by ballot for two persons of which one at least shall not be an inhabitant of the same state with themselves. Really? Which sounds yeah. like masturbation, but you know, that's yeah. awesome. <laughs> well, how come all these wonderful TV networks don't know that fact and they keep saying, oh, Marco Rubio's in the in the mix? Because they don't turn into tune into your podcast, that's why. Yeah, yeah they, and they also don't read the Constitution. Well, maybe they should hire you as like, a, you know, a fact checker. You know. Oh, well, uh, no, I'll give that to Charlie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you got any new projects going at all, Don? Or I got one project that's on hold because of uh, some asshole relatives. Some uh, asshole relatives? Oh, that was something, something you were doing for your relatives. No, not for my... No, it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, we have three minutes. I, I can't cover it that... And, and it'll... It'll put everyone to sleep. So. Oh, okay. Tomorrow uh, night it, when we're it, more awake. <laughs> yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll end earlier, Don. Well, we yeah, only we'll have see. about a minute and 15 seconds left, so I can't expect you to do all of that. Well, but, I'm never quite sure. Does Trump live in Florida or New York? Florida. New Jersey. He, he lives in, votes in Florida. Yeah, so he, I, he lives in Florida, but he's not supposed to live at Mar-a-Lago. That yeah, is not meant. Might, to, it is not the meant judge to be might a residence. order him to live there. What? And not leave. House arrest. Well, they ha they haven't asked him to leave. That's the problem. Well, they haven't. They haven't. They haven't charged. I mean, they haven't uh, given him his sentence yet. That's yeah. Coming oh, I I forgot to start my theme. There we go. There's the theme. Well, that's about it for tonight. I thought Don was going to sing for the theme. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, work. Jeff. Appreciate your calling uh, all the way there from Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, of course, Charlie, what can I say? You're always a pleasure, as are you, Brian. As are, well, are you, Alan? I haven't figured that out yet. I'll get back to you on that, okay? Uh, 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 Kevin, you're always a pleasure to have here. Tony, yeah, okay, sure, why not? 
and 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 Don, I wish you would call earlier yeah, because you make a, every show that we do just a little bit more fun. Man, I'm that I'm that guy on your Monday pop up. They don't want me to come back. So <laughs> what? That? No, that's Ooh. another guy altogether. He wasn't talking about we you. We weren't talking about you. Anyway, everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you. That's our citizen panel for tonight, folks. There they go. Uh, and we will have another citizen panel again tomorrow night. There's another one coming up right now with Amy uh, Manuel and the uh, intersection. And she'll be taking your calls at on Skype at GabNet Live. I'll see you again tomorrow night. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, if you see her, Tell her I love her, okay? Good night, everybody. <laughs>